Bonjour, mes amis. Hi, my name is Mike Ulmer, and I'm the guy that wrote this. Emma's from April, but this is kind of a cardboard version of the book. So we'll talk about that in a second. But this is the original book that I wrote. Emma's from April. But we'll talk about that in a second, because this is something really cool. This is the original art and diagram from Emma's from April. Neat, eh? Oh, I'll put you over there. Look at this. <laughs> How about that? And we'll talk about that in a little bit, too. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I live in uh, Hamilton, and I started writing books, oh boy, 20 years ago. And this was the third book that I wrote, but the first book whose audience was for young people. And uh, so what happened was I had written a couple of books for a company, and they were hockey books, which is good because uh, I'm a journalist and I was writing hockey books for people. And they came and said to me, they, want, they said, we want you to do a book about the alphabet for a Canadian alphabet. So all sorts of little Canadian stories in the alphabet. And I said, well, no, I said, I don't want to do this. No, I'm busy. And they said, you think it's a really good idea? And I said, no, no, I'm really busy. And then they played a trick on me. They brought me down to their headquarters in Michigan and they gave me lunch. And when you give me lunch, I'll do anything anything to get a good lunch so i said okay i'll do the book and boy am i ever glad that i did do the book because it was one of the best things i ever did and the great thing about it was that it gave me the chance to meet thousands and thousands of people just like you guys watching this today and i got to see all these different classes making their books they made emmets for maple books for themselves and and like it would they'd be ellis for line or whatever it was or sometimes they named it after their school and it was wonderful. It was just the best. And so I was so glad and am always glad that I got the chance to do this book. So let me show you a little bit about the book. So it's, it's, uh, it's got, I'm gonna look at here, but can't really see my face. I'll move over there. How does that look? There we go, right? <laughs> I like this, watch this. See what I just did there? There, we'll just go back here. <laughs> so this book has a page for every letter. So if I go to A, watch this. I'll show you a magic trick. I can look right through this page. Watch this. I'm going to read you this poem, even though my face is back here. You ready? A is for Anne. That's Anne with an E, a redheaded girl who loved Avonlea. The Cuthberts thought they were getting a boy, but that redheaded girl was their pride and their joy. Amazing. I can actually look through pages. Actually, no, since I wrote it, I know it by heart. <laughs> and I've read it so many times. So that was kind of a rotten trick. And that's what authors do. We do a lot of rotten tricks. Let me show you an, a rotten author trick that only kids can see. Only kids can see this. So I will put this, young people, if you look very closely at this page, very closely, can you see the face of the wind? Yeah. My friend Melanie, who did this wonderful book, she put that face in there just so only kids could see it. I don't know, something wrong with our adult eyes. Children always see that face. And our old adult eyes, we're not as good at seeing them. Here's another, I'll show you another little trick in this book. All right, you ready? This is a good one. This is a good one. This is one of my favorites. Oh, hang on with me now. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I am going to show you something really cool. I should know this by heart. Yes, right here. These are islands. If you look really closely with your little child eyes, your perfect, perfect eyes, you'll see there are three swimmers there. Now, my friend Melanie used to swim in an island like that. And she put one, two, three swimmers there because her and her brothers and sisters would always swim there. So in that book, there's a little message to her brothers and sisters that I'm thinking of you. And so for you older kids, what I want you to remember is everything in a book is there for a reason. Let me explain something to you. Hang on. Don't go away. Don't go. Here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Plan, plan, plan. Uh, hang on for a second. I'm kidding. Plans, 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 plans. Here is another illustration. 
That is from, I believe, the letter I. Let me see. I'm going to put this down and grab my book. Don't go anywhere, okay? I'm a very busy guy. I, 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 I. It's O. And as you can see, this is the original sketch to O. Everything in a book, we just don't do it willy nilly. Everything in a book is there for a reason. We write down what you want to do. We make a plan. And then we follow that plan. So for you older kids, when you want to write a book, the first thing you have to do is make a plan and shows what you want to put on every page and what you want every letter to be. Because some letters, you can do a thousand ones for some letters and some other letters are very hard. Z in particular has been challenging, but so has Y. But some letters, some letters you have lots of candidates for. I'll give you an example. So my wife and I, we don't agree over very few things. We agree on a lot of things. We don't agree over this. This is C, and I'm going to read you the poem to C. C is for Canada where it once was a must that only a male held a position of trust. But then came Kim Campbell with a C, who knew and believed that nothing else mattered but the courage to lead. See, my wife wanted to put Emily Carr, who's her favorite artist, in and whose name also starts with a C. And I said, no. No, I want to put Kim Campbell here because I want to remind all the boys and girls that we have had a female prime minister. And I know this is going to sound crazy to you. This, I tell kids this and they look at me like I'm from Mars. There are some people, honestly, there are some people who believe that because you're a girl, you're not as able as if you were a boy. I know. I know it's ridiculous, <laughs> but it's true. And so I wanted to remind all the boys and girls how ridiculous that was and how we've had a prime minister who was a female. So I did that for a reason. Everything in a book is for a reason. And so I was able to tell some great stories in this book. And I'm going to tell you a couple now if I can, okay? So I'll start at the end. And look, there's kids, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but when you're camping, if you have a lamp, you can, you can make letters with your fingers. And so here, there's some kids, some young people making letters with their fingers. How about that? Z stands for zipper, which everyone knows is very important in tents and in clothes. A US inventor had a zipper's notion, but it took a Canadian to get the zipper in motion. So the zipper was invented by a Canadian. I didn't know that, which is good news because Z is a really, really hard letter. Let me show you what I've done for other Zs. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Oh, so Z, I did this book for a hockey book. This is called Emma's for Maple Leafs, which is my favorite team. And if are there are any children out there who are fans of the Montreal Canadiens who cheer for the Montreal Canadiens, you're wrong. Okay, let's go back to, <laughs> I don't mean that, you're right. You have your, everyone has their favorite team. So Z in this book is for officials, zebras. Can you, can you imagine, do you know why they call officials zebras sometimes? Take a guess why they call officials zebras. Do we know? Yeah, because they have stripes on their shirts and they look like zebras. So they call them zebras. That's Z. Z can be a very challenging letter. Let me see on this one. What did I do with Z? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see now. Z, 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 X, Y. Oh, yeah. This is a good one. Z is for Zamboni. And this story was really good because in the many years ago, they didn't have a team in a town in Minnesota called St. Paul. They love hockey in St. Paul. And they were so excited when the NHL, the league said, you're gonna have a team. They didn't have a name yet, but they were really excited. But they said, oh, we're really excited. What are we gonna do? And someone said, well, we don't have any players. We don't have a name. Our arena isn't built yet. What do we have? 
that's about hockey. And someone said, well, we have all these rinks. They all have a Zamboni. And they had a Zamboni parade. And here is a picture of the Zamboni parade in St. Paul, Minnesota, right there. Everyone drove their Zambonis and honked their horns and had a wonderful day celebrating the Zamboni parade. So Zed, you're gonna find if you do your own letters, Zed can be a little bit of a stretch, but that's okay. So listen, let's do some other stuff here and show you some other letters and I'll show you. Now, when I did this book, remember I told you, there is A is for Ann. I said, no, I don't wanna do it. They brought me to lunch. They said, we have one condition. I said, what? They said, you have to do A and of Green Gables because the woman who gave me this job, she was originally from that part of the country. She was originally from the East. So I said, okay, if you give me lunch, I'll do the book and I'll do Anne of Green Gables, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I love Anne of Green Gables and with an E. Let's see, what can we do? Oh, here's one. This is one of my favorites. It's the Dion Quintuplets. I have to move back here because we needed two pages for all of them. So imagine a lady has a baby. She has another baby at the same time. She has a third baby. All the teachers and the moms and your moms out there are going three babies. She wasn't done yet. Four babies. Five babies. Could you imagine five brothers and sisters, five babies, instantly all in one sitting? The Dion quintuplets were the most famous babies on the planet. People traveled to Northern Ontario where their home was all from all over the world to see the famous, famous Dion quintuplets. People made movies about them and they were more popular than any act, any act, any musical act, any singer, anyone you can name right now in the world, more popular than Beyonce, which is pretty popular for me, more popular than Cardi B or any of these other people. They were the most famous children in the world and they were from Canada. And I'll read you the poem. There's the little girls. Dean means Dion and five little girls who drew millions of people from all around the world. Emil, Cecile, Yvonne made for three. The set was completed with Annette and Marie. And even though this happened in 1934, two of the quintuplets are still alive. Okay, what else have we got for you? E, O, G, okay. Geez, a good one. H, this is one of my favorites. Because this is the time of year now where everyone's playing on their ponds. And there's rinks, and stuff going on. And my friend Melon did a wonderful job because and you can see that there's boots for goal. Some, a lot of times you don't have a net, so you just stick a couple of boots there. And if you put the puck through the boots, you got a goal. And so H is for hockey, the game that we play from summer's last whisper to snows melting away. We may never grow to be NHL stars, but it's something we care for and it'll always be ours. I love playing hockey. Hmm, let's see. Let's see, what else do we have here for you? Oh, we got a lot here. Oh, I like this one. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights before? They're so beautiful. They're, all, they're kind of hard to paint because they're so beautiful. I think Melanie did a wonderful job of painting them there. She's an excellent artist. I should say that I didn't do any of the painting. So the way the books work is that I write the poetry and then they paint it. And I don't have any say at all as to what Melanie does for her paintings. And she doesn't have any say at all and as to how I write my poems. I go first and then she follows up. And even though Melanie is a really good friend and a wonderful artist, we work independently of each other. And then at the end, I have no idea what it's going to look like and neither does she. So when the book comes out, we're very delighted. And we've been delighted every time. Now, N is for Northern, the great Northern lights, those mystery visions that light up our nights. The Inu believed that the lights showed a game being played by the sky people in their heavenly domain. The scientific name for the Northern lights is Aurora Borealis, which in Latin means Northern Dawn. How about that? Now this guy, this is neat because I have a little story to tell you about this. This man's name is Oscar Peterson and he is 
uh, in, uh, when he was uh, uh, playing piano, he was the greatest pianist ever. He played jazz and so really fun music. And in jazz, you make it up as you go along, right? You don't have words on a sheet like I use. You don't have a plan like I talked about. Jazz, you just make it up as you go along. So there's nowhere to hide in jazz. If you're great, you're gonna show it. And so a jazz player can play along with anyone. And the great thing about Oscar, the world's greatest jazz pianist, is that he could play with anyone. So Louis Armstrong, heaven, I'm in heaven. He played with Oscar Peterson. Everyone played with Oscar Peterson. He was from Montreal and he was the best, man. He was amazing. And the story that I love most about Oscar Peterson right there, that picture's hanging in my house, by the way, is that someone told me that he bought six of these books. And I thought, oh my goodness, Oscar Peterson broke my, bought my book, which is the really great thing about writing books because you can write about anything. You can hide little stories in it and you can have little jokes in it and you can write about people you really admire like Oscar Peterson. And someday maybe Oscar Peterson will buy six of your books or someone you really admire will buy six of your books. And that is the best feeling to tell someone how much you admire them and then to have them want to do what you made for them. Kind of like when you give your mom or dad something, right? Sometimes little people give their mom and dads uh, bouquets of dandelions. It feels so good to give that person something, eh? That's what it's like when you write books. It's really neat. Okay. All right. Here is, even though I hate to tell a story about the Montreal Canadiens, here is my favorite. This man's name was Maurice Richard. And he was a wonderful hockey player. And the thing about Morris was, he didn't have a plan either. When he went out on the ice, he just had to score. So if you ask Wayne Gretzky, and this is maybe for the older kids, but if you ask Wayne Gretzky how he scored a goal, he would have a big plan that he had. If you asked Morris how he scored a goal, he'd say, I don't know, I just did it. Everything Morris did came from the heart. And that's what made him so beloved and such a great hockey player. And he was a great star for the most, it hits me to say, the most successful team in, in hockey history. I hate to say it, the Montreal Canadiens. And they're beautiful, beautiful blue jerseys. Now take a look at Morris. Look at his eyes. You can see right there. That's a famous painting from a famous picture. That's how he played. His eyes were about as big as saucers. And when he saw the net, they got bigger. He was an amazing person. I went to his funeral. And when Morris was so beloved that if you go to her funeral, they, they often put the, 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 uh, the casket in a car and they drive it to wherever it's going. And uh, as the car drove through Montreal, you could hear everybody clapping because they all loved Morris. And as the car drove away, I could hear the distant claps of admiration for this great man, Morris Richard, because everyone loved him. He was really a neat guy, I got to meet him. That's also the great thing about writing books. You get to meet the coolest people. So I got to spend a half an hour talking to this guy. How great is that? <laughs> really great. So that is Emma's for Maple. And I will show you, let's see if I got part of the plan. Don't bother me now, I'm working here. Do you mind? Here, I'm working here. Wait a second, let me show you something. Yeah, remember I showed you the Dion quintuplets? Take a look at that picture. See? No, okay, take a good look at it because you're gonna have to put it in your memory. Okay, you got it in your memory? Lock it in. Okay, you got it? Take a click, just make this sound, click. Do it for me. I can't hear you, do it for me now. Okay, I heard that, click, okay. Now, I couldn't quite hear you there for a second. All right, so, Dion Quintuplet starts with a D. They haven't changed the alphabet all these years. Now take a look at the Dion Quintuplets there in the page. Now take a look at the original sketch. Can you see something different? What's that thing? You can see the mom, right? 
you can see the mom in the original picture. You can see the mom. This is what's called a sketch, or actually, this is much, this stuff I called you. This is more of a sketch. So, first you sketch it, and then you paint it, and you decide whether you want to make any differences, any changes. Because with books, you're always, always changing them. So, here is, okay, take a, take a click. Come on. Come on. Okay. Now, here they are. So what happened is Melanie, the brilliant Melanie, did this and decided, oh, I think it's more effective if I do it this way without the mom. And you'll never know, unless I just told you, that this used to have the mom in. And that's the great thing about books. There's stuff that I know that you don't know because I did it. And I made all the decisions. And so we have all sorts of sketches. Here's one sketch for Terry Fox. So in my, most of my books, you'll find something about Terry Fox. I know you guys have Terry Fox runs and all this stuff. And I love Terry Fox runs. And I'm a big fan of Terry Fox. And one of the things that was really interesting to me was that he had uh, – he only used one shoe on his prosthetic. He only had one shoe, but on his actual leg, he had a bunch of shoes. And so I needed something for the number eight because I did, after I did letters, I did numbers. And so here's the picture of Terry Fox running. And here's the poem. I saw somewhere that he had gone through eight shoes on his left foot, but he didn't have to go through any shoes on his right foot. So I wrote the poem. Eight left shoes and just one right to carry him from dark, from morning light. The right shoe never need be new, but the left was always wearing through. For the hero of Canada's cancer fight needed eight left shoes and just one right. And I can show you all sorts of more pictures and sketches and stuff like that, but I think you get the idea. So. Let's review, shall we? The great thing about writing a book is that you can give this as a gift to people and make them feel wonderful. You can show the world what you think is important. You can work with somebody else to create something magical. You can even work independently of somebody else like Melanie and I. She did her part, I did mine. There's just, you can put little hidden little things in your book that no one sees but you and your child eyes. And you can write things that you think are particularly important, even if someone else, like my wife, doesn't agree. Now, the only thing I can't do is give you lunch to write your own book. You're, you're going to have to go home to get your own lunch. I, you know, that's not on me. But if you want to write your own book, I'll always be around to give you some advice. Okay? Thank you for letting me come into your classrooms and come into your homes today. I had a wonderful time. This is Mike Omer. I'll talk to you soon.